So welcome, Chris, uh, remotely into our learning studio session today. We've got uh, a bigger audience than we had when we started, but it's not that big, but it's at least it's more than me and uh, Phil, so go ahead. Great. Thank you, Paul, for letting me um, do it this way. Um, I thought this would be a, g a good um, sort of pilot anyway to try and maybe, even though we have technical problems, but that happens, and I'm going to be talking about that anyway. Um, but it's quite nice to have um, this idea that we could use um, Rimba as part of any further uh, learning studio, future learning studios. Um, so we can basically get in a wider audience maybe, um, and we can all um, join in that way if, if people can't make it. Um, so uh, today I'm just going to give a, a brief overview of exactly what we've been, um, been doing as part of the Alto team. This is the art, learning, and teaching online, um, and some of the projects that have uh, stemmed off that, and some that are running in parallel to that, or are just starting at the moment. So the Alto project was uh, part of the phase two of the UK OER, which is Open Education Resources, um, UK-wide project um, for institutions um, to release uh, learning materials uh, openly and uh, freely on the web um, in order to encourage um, a, a greater amount of open learning content out in, in the, in the, on the web. Um, this was part of JISC, which is the Gen uh, Joint Information Systems Committee, um, and they're, they're funded by, um, by the ATA, the uh, Higher Education Academy. So th this was last year, we've been working on this project for a year, and uh, the, the sort of key principles of the project was to um, begin a, a sense of institutional change, really, in, in the thinking um, regarding open practice. So releasing content to the world, as you do when you put it online, um, what, what, what do you need to be aware of when you do, um, when you do that? So what, one of the key uh, aspects that we approached at the very beginning was uh, Creative Commons. And I'll just click over the slide, hopefully it moves. Um, so Creative Commons uh, enables you to um, take your, 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 your work, your learning material, and um, let the people that are possibly going to be using your learning material, um, how you're, you're instructing them, basically how that can be used. So um, the Creative Commons license lies on top of a standard um, copyright license which is normally um, gives no one any information about what they can do with that material. So, for example, if you're searching the web for um, some material for a lecture and, and you find something really good and you think, oh, I want to use that, um, how, can, are you, can, can you use that? Um, most people just go for it and just, and just use it. So, in a way, this is streamlining uh, our approach, our, our open approach, to, to how, how, how we deal with content on that. So the Creative Commons uh, gives various ways of, of putting this layer on top of your content. So if you've created a nice um, learning resource and you want to put it out to the world, you can just say, um, I'll put it out there and you can use this however you want. You can adapt it. You can use it to your own materials. Uh, I don't care what you do with it. But what I would like is attribution. And uh, for that license, you would use the attribution license. You can add uh, extras onto that in regards to if you don't want your content used for non-commercial, you can um, add a non-commercial license on that. And um, likewise, if you want to encourage the same activity that you're doing in regards to um, the common good, putting content out there for people to pick up and use, then you can ask for the share and like, which, which is basically saying, I've put this content out under this license and I'd like you to share it in the same way. Um, and you can lock your content down even further by putting a no derivative on there where people can't um, break your content up into different, into different um, pieces. So going back to the file store, which is primarily what we were, um, ch our, our challenge was to create a central file store for UAL. This is a place to, to store your resources, your content, basically. So, um, it's uh, a long-term, the idea is it's a long-term storage area where you can, so if you've got pieces of video, 
video um, material or uh, lots of documents, and you just uh, they're all over your desktop or on hard drives all over the place. You can um, deposit those in, in the Alto file store, which is a, in, on UAL. It's open to the world, but there are different levels to the file store. So you can deposit that content in there and keep it private. You can put that content in there and share it amongst your, your peers or your, your cohort um, or your institution um, or um, the, the institution as a whole, including the six colleges. You can then also um, use the license, the Creative Commons license, to share that out to the wider world. So, so the choices are yours. So this is the central file store. Part, so part of the Alto, we were looking at the Alto ecosystem. And so we came up with this landing page, which hopefully you can see. Um, so this is, we were looking at the university as a whole. And, and just by putting a repository, which we were, um, that, that, that was what we were meant to do. Obviously, we called it file store. But we were looking at the landscape um, uh, at UAL as a whole, and, and, we, and we were, um, we understood that there's lots going on, and, and uh, just by putting a repository file store into the system is not necessarily going to work. So we looked at this wider ecosystem of how we um, can acknowledge all the other stuff that's going on. So in a way, we, we built this uh, landing page in order to fire you up into all the different stuff. So um, you've got the file store, we've got process arts, which I'll talk about in a minute, and we've got the affiliated sites, which are sites which come under the umbrella of Alto. And um, if these sites, so all these blogs and, and people making their own websites, if they start to adopt the Creative Commons license and within those sites, they could, they, they fall into this affiliated. But we also have affiliated sites that are, are working towards that, and, and the, um, uh, hopefully the Alto can inform that. So Process Arts, which existed uh, before Alto, uh, this is going on for about three years now, and it's been slowly uh, developing. Um, obviously, this informed the, 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 the building of Alto and the thinking behind Alto. Um, and the process arts has fallen under the umbrella, which is quite nice because it's, it's been a bit wayward in the fact that it's never really had any funding, any, um, no one's really taken it under its wing. So it's, it's, just been, it's just been there and just been limping on in a sort of voluntary manner. Um, which is really good because uh, this whole Alto ecosystem that we're looking at sustainable models of, of, of keeping this going. So Process Arts very much concentrates on the day-to-day nitty-gritty, -day, uh, 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 all, all, the, all, the, all the bits of stuff that you may, maybe um, come across in the day and you just want to start compile your own little section. Um, so if you're working in animation, for instance, and, you, and you're coming together with lots of um, websites that you're finding, you can start to build um, uh, links and um, a little area there for yourself. Um, and also, it's a really good place to um, start to mash up this content. So it might be a case that you put your originals into Alto Firestore, and then you put some content in, in Process Arts, and, and you maybe mix it with other content from other repositories that you, you found on Process Arts uh, uh, are, are all starting to be compiled there. So that's, that, that's very much what the Process Arts site is becoming, this sort of work area. And um, let the more informal space where Alto is more the formal space institutional. Um, so uh, a big success of the early days of, of Process Arts was um, some of the videos that I've been seeing today in Philip White with his um, fellowship. And as you can see on this screen grab of the Process Arts YouTube channel, you know, he's, 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 he's notched up over 100,000 of his videos, 35,000 for one video. And um, so that's a fantastic, I think um, Philip's story is fantastic in regards to um, the, the journey he, he's been on. It'd be really nice to capture that journey that he's been on and, uh, and, and the work he's producing at the moment. And the last time I went to see him in his, in his um, foundry, there was uh, cameras hooked to the wall and it was fantastic, amazing. Uh, so it's not just about hits. So he's getting over 100,000 hits, but he's getting lots of interest, lots of comments from all over the world. He's, well, you know, I was just loving the work that Philip's doing, and um, and you know we're feeding back as best we can, um, and it's also informing. So there was uh, one comment uh, that asked for um, 
uh, how he made his boxes. And, and Philip Hand, Hand uh, wrote all the instructions on how to make the boxes, and we, and we just scanned those in and posted those online, and, and, uh, and it can be as simple as that. Okay, so the, I've been working on a, the Open University, which has um, got a, a support centre for open resource in education. And I've uh, been doing a fellowship there, and I'm going to be doing it for the rest of the next few months. And, and but basically, what I'm looking at is the reuse of materials. And um, so, so if, if all this content is going on there and being open, uh, how do we start to use it um, to, to, for us? Uh, what's the benefits? You know? Okay, you can you can see view content, but how can you actually start to use it? So, so my um, uh, school research is, is is very much looking into that, into the whole whole idea of reuse. So, because um, because there's different ways of using. So, at, at the moment, like I was saying, if you want to find something, you just go onto Google and you, and you just search for it, and, and you just pull up exactly what you what, what you want, and you don't really care about licensing and, and things like that. And that's got sort of high risk reuse and and content that is pulled off without any um, consideration given to whether you can use that content or not is, is obviously not, not going to be very useful for um, the licensing yourself because you can't license other people's content. So in an ideal world, um, your starting point would be to find content that you um, know is uh, valid and good to use uh, to build your resources. And then when you release those resources out for other people to reuse and repurpose, um, that they're all uh, low risk and, and usable, and, and therefore um, relevant and, and useful. Um, so that's very much based on the reuse um, side of, what, of, of what's happening at the moment. But obviously one of the most difficult things is that because we're a practice-based course, that um, how do you capture this tacit? Uh, how do you make explicit the, the, the tacit information, tacit knowledge, the tacit exchanges that are going on? And, and that's, the, that's the challenge, that's the real challenge. Uh, but it's, it's quite an interesting, and I think, um, a, a, a good challenge for the institution to pick up. So, um, so where, where are we going now? Um, so we've got all this stuff going on. We've uh, just been funded again by JISC to run a digital integration into arts learning, which is a digital literacy program. So th this is quite a nice card to pull at this point because we've got all this uh, really good stuff going on, but there's a lot of, uh, a lot of staff and students out there that, um, that need support into integrating into this new digital and open environment. Um, so the dial project is, is quite timely in, 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 in that uh, example. But we've also got a lot of people out there in, in the institution that, that know a lot and they have a lot of information and, 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 and can pass on that information. So the DAO project has taken an approach of, of um, pulling all those people together and building up these communities of practice within um, certain specific areas. So we, we can have this exchange of knowledge and this support system and again very much based on a sustainable ongoing support system. And the, the idea is that, that, that if you want to know something, um, you're not forced onto a, a training course or, or to do something. So you, 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 there's just a means, a way and a means of, of getting that information, whether it's you dip into a community and ask people, um, or, or you know that community there in order to, and you can sit on the periphery and just um, take, take what you need from that community. So that, that's where we are at the moment. and. Um, I'd encourage anyone that's interested in, in the Dial project. It's, it's literally just starting up, so, so, so we're in very early days at the moment. Um, but if you email me, I, I can. Um, so I'm, I'm starting to build up these communities and, and find out where the interest is. Um, and that's what the Dial project is at the moment. So that's, that's like a really quick overview of everything that's going on at the moment. And I think I'll, I'll conclude there. Thank you for listening. If you are still there. Um, so the question was, Chris, is what's the relation between the Alto project and our current or future VLE? How do you see that fitting together? Is it something that is a replacement in some ways for the VLE, or is it sit alongside the VLE, whatever that ends up being? Yeah, this is interesting, because um, obviously you forget the new VLE. The, 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 the VLE is very much about delivering the course, um, so course information, course structure. Well, the Alto is very much about content. 
And so, so it's this almost separation, and the two set next to each other. So Alto is built to handle content and to store content long term as a library. And uh, the VLE is very much about just the day to day running of your course and the nitty gritty um, uh, course specific stuff. Yeah, I think that quite a few people have talked about something that's called VLE agnostic. So things that sit outside the VLE, so no matter what VLE is, and especially if you want to share with other institutions, you know, it's got to be compatible or, or integratable into other people's spaces as well. Exactly. And I, I think um, I think this is I, I think it's all um, it'd be a nice debate to have and, and I think this is again maybe what the dial project could facilitate um, feedback, you know, how, how would people use Alto and and a, a new VLE together. So I, I guess again, like I say, it's very timely that the dial project there to facilitate those conversations. Hi Chris, it's Ruth here. Oh, really? Hiya. Um, it's interesting that Alto, people can put in their content and keep it private. That seems to go totally against the grain of what an OER repository is all about. And given that, isn't there, isn't there the risk that people just use it as a spare hard disk? It was, uh, it, it's about little steps, I think. And I think, um, I, I totally agree. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much in, in the realm of hardcore OER. <laughs> Where I, I I would rather work on the presumption of both fully open, and uh, um, but I think people uh, like I, I did when I first started off um, need to approach this in, in little steps really. And so so for instance, my taking my own um, experiences that I started off um, not wanting to put stuff out, and then I release a little bit of stuff and and then see what feedback I get, and I think your confidence starts to build up and. I, I, I've gone from having my licenses non-commercial um, um, uh, attribution. I I just put attribution now, and, and there might be a point where I, I just have no uh, restrictions on it at all, and just say just go and do what you want to do with it. And I think that's where we're going to a point where, where people potentially put their stuff out there. But um, I think it's yeah, little steps, and, and people are getting used to putting their content out there. And um, yeah, it, it's it's. It's, 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 a, it's a difficult one. Another question just coming up, Chris. Oh, Chris. Um, how, much, um, how much actual storage space do you have then uh, in the actual file store? Yeah, these are good questions. Um, and the, 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 because the Alto. Um, File store is very much like a, again, it's still very much in a pilot sort of phase. So I guess, I guess what 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 is um, apparent is that is that we don't there's a lot of unknowns in this in this area, and and I think um, I, I guess it's based on demand, and we, we need to may, maybe just um, see see what happens. Um, so I, I I guess if there is a user, this is the same with process ask because we we. Uh, been running that for quite quite a while, and if there's a user that you know is is putting on lots and lots of content, which is really useful and good, then then, then why not increase that that user's uh, capacity to to carry on doing what they're doing? Um, but obviously, if if everyone's putting lots and lots and lots of content on, it's and um, like we've said, if it's all closed, and it totally defeats the whole object. So I, I guess it's it's it, it, in a way it's it's it, it's yeah, we've just got to monitor, monitor this, and, and um, it's an experiment, I guess, at, at this stage, and, and very much like a, a sort of pilot project. Uh, yeah, that makes, that makes sense. The other thing I wanted to ask was, is it sort of, uh, is it a thing with you that you only get involved in projects where the first letters of all the words spell another word? <laughs> yeah, exactly, and that, that, that's why I like process on. It says what it is. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Great, thanks very much, Chris. Good, and it worked, it worked pretty well. I think once we got going with the um, the Wimba remote, so um, I think probably the best idea for that is to bring a guest speaker in from outside to one of the yeah, time, maybe. yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah, it'd be good. Yeah, well, thank you. Should you give a round of applause for Chris. Um,
Yay! Yay. Well and, and, and like I say, if anyone wants to contact me regards to the dial project, um, we're just in the initial stages of setting up these communities, so um, any interest in that would be great. Yeah, so it's Chris, Chris, C. Follow the, is it just R? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still Wimbledon. So C. Follows at Wimbledon. .arts.ac.uk. Uh, well, if you just go to process arts, you'll find me on there, and you can message me internally through uh, the internal email system in there as well. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Chris. Great. Cheers.